Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Zek and in this video we will cover query parameters in FastAPI. So let's get started. So first you may wonder what are query parameters? Let's take a look at a URL. Here we have an example URL with an items endpoint and then a question mark followed by some variable assignments. Query parameters are the part of the URL that begins after the question mark. They are key value pairs using an equal sign to assign them. You can have multiple query parameters by separating them with an ampersand. We can then use the variable names of limit and name and put them into a function. By default, query parameters are strings, but we can convert them into other data types like integers, booleans, floats, and we can also use enums for predefined values. Let's take a look at an example in VS Code. So first up, we have our basic setup where we have from FastAPI import FastAPI, setting up the app, and then creating a get route for forward slash items with an async function get item. And here we're gonna pass in the parameter count as an int. Notice for query parameters, we don't pass anything into the endpoint right here. If this was a path parameter, then we would have it like this with brackets with the variable name. But since we don't have that, FastAPI will automatically interpret these parameters as query parameters. So having this like this, we'll go ahead and run the app with uvicorn app colon app dash dash reload. And so once that's done, we can go ahead and copy this link, paste in our address bar into forward slash items. And we can do a question mark for a query parameter. And this a count equals five or whatever other value you want. We'll go ahead and press enter. And then we have right here, a JSON returned of count five, which is what we have right here in our return on our function. If you tried to pass a different value that can't be interpreted into an int, let's say like 5.6, this will throw us an error saying that our input is not valid. So fast API automatically has some built-in input validation for you. So we can go ahead and add another query parameter. We'll add a name parameter as a string, and we'll also return that in our return value. We'll head back up into our browser, and we'll say count is equal to five, and then we'll go ahead and add an ampersand to have more than one query parameter. So after that, we'll have name equals, and then whatever else we want for our name. So let's say Zek, we'll go ahead into this, and we can see our return value is count five and name Zek. Something you might wonder about is how do you have a space in between the names? Because if I try to do zek space tech and enter, it actually automatically converts this into a percent twenty, which is the encoded value for a space. This is just how the browser handles it. So whenever we do get it on the backend side, it automatically decodes it and then gives us that space in between the name. We can actually mix path parameters and query parameters together. We can do this simply by just adding our path parameter of item ID, passing it as the first value into our function, and then any query parameters we want to have after that. And here we go ahead and return all the values that we passed in. Now we could keep going up into our URL and adding these query parameters, but we can also just hit our docs endpoint, and we can see our endpoints here and test them here. So we can see our item endpoint with item ID. We'll go ahead and open this, and we get the fields here. So our path parameters here that we can go ahead and add a value for once we hit try it out. But we also have our query parameters here and we can see that it distinguishes between path and query. And in this case, you can see these are required values. So if we were to hit these endpoints without these query parameters, since they are required at the moment, it will throw us an error as well. But we can go and hit try it out and we'll go ahead and put some values in here. Then we'll hit execute. Scroll down. We can see the URL that gets hit for our application. And we can see that we have count here, name, and the two for the item ID. And then here's our JSON being returned from our function over here. And you can see again here, it went ahead and encoded this for us as percent %20. If we did try to grab this endpoint and go to it, but let's get rid of the query parameters. Since they were required, this will throw an error, and we can see our error here, seeing that it is missing the query value of count and the query value of name. If we come back over into our function here, we'll say int is equal to zero, 
a name of string is equal to, let's just say default name. We go and add these values and put them on each line. Then we'll go ahead and refresh this endpoint we have right here. And with our default values, they were passed in, so there's no more error now. If we do want these query parameters to be optional, we can declare the type as a string or none, or an int or none, or anything else or none, and set it equal to none. But we can go and save this, have it reload, and go ahead and refresh the page over here. And we can see that the item ID 2, count 0, and name is null. And null is the equivalent of none right here. If we go back into our Swagger UI, we'll go ahead and refresh the page. Since we have this default value and the default value of none, these values over here in the browser are no longer required. And we can even see it has our default value of 0 right here. We can also use other data types such as floats, booleans, enums, and even lists. So here we have added a float and a boolean, and you can see they appear over here in the browser. We have available, which is a default value of true. Since it is a boolean, there are only two values available for it. And we do have an amount here, which is a number, which we can put numbers with decimals in it. If we do want to get a list of values from the query string, we will have to import query from FastAPI. In this case, I no longer have the path parameter, and I've changed my parameters to item IDs, which is a list of integers. We set it equal to query, and we pass none as the first value. Then we'll go ahead and return the item IDs back to the browser. We'll go ahead and refresh the FastAPI page, go and open this. We can see once we try it out, it does have this item ID as an array of integers. We go ahead and add the integer item, say 23, we'll add another one, 42, 52, and execute. And we can see the request URL. This item IDs is now the value, and then an ampersand, and then item IDs, and then item IDs again. And this will group all of the item IDs together and send them to our fast API. So here I'll show you an example of how we can use an enum as a query parameter. We import enum from our enum module. Then we'll go ahead and create a class called fruit, inheriting from enum. And then we have our enum values here. Then we will have a get endpoint of forward slash fruits with our function here, passing in a fruit of type fruit. Then we'll go ahead and return the fruit.value back to the browser. So whenever we go back to the browser and go to our docs endpoint, we can see that our enum will actually show up here in the schemas. And it shows us the values here. These will correlate back to our endpoint right here of this little drop down right here. And so this drop down will give us values based on our enum values over here. So we can go ahead and hit execute. And we can see it did return fruit with apple. If we were to take this request URL, go to a new tab, and try to put some value that does not exist in our enum, let's say like lychee, it will go ahead and return us an error saying that the input should be one of these values, but it's not. And that's it for the basics of query parameters. In the next video, we'll go over some more validations and some more advanced things you can do with them. If you found this video helpful, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.